Welcome you all to our new episode, Danny from Seabiker Studio. And today we talk about Cannondale mountain bikes for 2018. There have been some changes made, pretty surprising to me. And uh, lots of models to choose from and you're gonna have some problems to choose between different models. You, you see why in the second. Uh, I'm also going to explain the sport uh, bikes which can be the most um, misunderstood maybe especially for those beginner uh, mountain bikers who, who will opt for sport bikes so mountain bikes we've got cross country these are made for racing we've got enduro this is made for racing then we've got all mountain all about fun and then trail uh, is about anything having fun going for long, long rides uh, descending climbing and then sport will be for, for beginners who want to try going uh, through some, some mountains, some trails. And then fat bike, you know, this is only for fun. Snow, mud, super, super um, buffy tires. Let's start with the Scalpel SI and the FSI. And FSI, that's something that's changed so much. So this is the FSI front suspension, uh, cross-country racing uh, bikes and what's changed for 2018 guys there is no aluminum bikes I was actually uh, thinking they would um, put some features from the carbon bikes and uh, and let the alloy bikes owners have it but no there is no aluminum uh, front suspension cross-country racing bikes from Cannondale I don't know why maybe they will prepare something new or just they discontinued alloy so Cannondale, which is super cool in making aluminum bikes, doesn't have it. Surprising, this is very surprising for me. But we've got here three models with high modules carbon frame. So very light one and expensive one. And then the rest are non high modules carbon. The high modules will, will also have the carbon lefty fork and the non-high modules will have either the alloy uh, PBR fork or some standard, standard forks. Uh, all cross-country racing bikes from Cannondale are made on uh, around 29er uh, inch wheels. So both FSI and Scalpel 29ers. Only small size will have uh, the 27.5 inch wheels. All right, now some features. Which color would you like to see? Let's, let's go for the team. Uh, yes, I still think, and this is my opinion, that uh, Lefty Fork is the best fork for cross-country races uh, on the planet. I've, I've tested that also this year, comparing the best forks, and Lefty really shines. Why? I'm going to cover that on another episode. Um, I'm just trying to keep it short. Uh, some features uh, which are really available only on Kenner bikes is the AI uh, system, so asymmetrical integration. The rear end of the frame is asymmetrical so that the wheel will be symmetrical and that's the best way to build the wheel, period. You want to have symmetrical spokes, you want to have symmetrical wheel, it will be more stable, stiffer, better, period. That's uh, what they have and that's what I thought they would give to the Alloy FSI, but no. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, Lefty, we've got 1.5 uh, bearings, both um, the upper one and, and, um, uh, and the one at the bottom. So really stiff uh, front end with special geometry and offset of the fork will give you nice geometry for racing. That's it. Safe system. Sit post, of course, on the frame, but mostly the sit post. The sit post really works. It is super, super nice. Uh, I do like it. These are very good racing bikes. And the high modulus will come as a one by with one by drivetrain, non high modulus two by drivetrain. So racing bikes, you can use those as all rounders as I do, but you have to get used to the position on the on the racing bike. Scalpel. Uh, this is surprising here because um, Scapo still has the alloy version. So we have the high modulus carbon, the super duper light and, and expensive for those who are sponsored, I would say, or just have a lot of money. That's okay. And then we have also the alloy version. So carbon ends with the number four and then the five is alloy. Uh, these bikes also have asymmetrical rear wheel. Uh, asymmetrical rear end and symmetrical rear, rear wheel which is great uh, 
uh, and they come with the system called um, zero pivot. So no pivot here between the seat stays and chain stays, lighter weight, less parts. I do like this approach. Uh, this part here, the seat stay, will accumulate uh, some, some energy while your travel goes deep uh, because it has to flex because of no pivots here and then it will give that energy back. But the kinematics of this, uh, of this suspension is made so that you won't feel like, like it, it, it's working against you. Not at all. Very good bikes, light, stiff, just good racing bikes. Uh, the problem starts with the SE models and just as I sh showed you uh, before on the road bikes, the SE models, SE, these two letters uh, are mean that the bike, the model with SE features will have usually lower gearing, wider tires, just made more for fun. The Scapa also gets the dropper post here and more travel. So one 130 in the front and 115 in the rear. Whereas these standard cross-country racing bikes will have 100 both front and rear. So a little bit more travel, a little bit towards more towards trail and fun, but still being quite aggressive and having the uh, racing geometry. Uh, let's go further. The next one is the Habit. So the Habit will have just a little bit more travel than, uh, than the Scapel SE and the 27.5 inch wheels. Now Cannondale say somewhere here that we've got three different options of, uh, of frames. Full carbon, carbon front and alloy rear end and full alloy but here uh, they only feature a uh, full ca uh, carbon front and alloy uh, rear or uh, full alloy. So there is no carbon uh, swing arms on these bikes. I don't know, is it a mistakes, mistake or is it for different countries? I'm not sure. Uh, but these are the bikes. As you can see, the top model will, with, will come with, uh, with lefty, but for the longer travel forks, the like RockShox Pike, for example, would be very, very good fork. So here, uh, if we go for the specs, we've got 130 in the front and 120 in the rear. So pretty capable uh, trail bike, which will still climb very good. So if you like having fun on the trails, but, the, but climbing also matters for you. Maybe you go for long rides and you want to save energy, the habit will do the job for you. It's not super aggressive trail bike because trail bikes now are getting much more tough, much more aggressive and get more travel. Like Merida 140, for example, uh, I've been riding. Uh, but this bike is still pretty light uh, and very capable on the climbs. So this is a real all-rounder. Um, Canada habit. Now we go further and it gets now even more complicated because we still have habit, but this is bad habit. And that means it will have the plus size wheels. Uh, so this bike will be heavier and maybe you're gonna have more fun on the plus size. I don't have more fun uh, on plus. You've got 120 in the front, 120 in the rear and much wider tires. Maybe you want to have more grip. Uh, one you want, you feel like you have more fun on these tires. Choose those. What to choose from? Bad habit or habit? You need to ride plus size tires in order to make decision. I cannot tell you uh, that. For me, uh, if I have 120 millimeters of travel front rear, I would go for just standard bike and not plus because plus will be heavier, and I don't really feel like these plus tires make me faster or. or get me more fun. And now Habit or Scapel SE, uh, so pretty much the same uh, travel. This is the SE here. Remember, Scapel is racing bike still and it's 29er. Habit is trail bike and it's 27.5. For fun, I think Habit will be better. If you want to go sometimes for cross-country marathons, uh, cross-country races or some marathons or just long rides and be really efficient than a scalpel. Okay, let's go further. Now we have the, uh, the uh, trigger. This is the bike I tested also uh, this year. I made an episode about it and I didn't like it as much as 
I suppose I was supposing I would. So this is it, completely new, uh, new model, redesigned frame, and we've got 150 in the front and 145 in the rear. So it, it is much more capable descender than the Habit. It is super fun to descend on this bike, but I don't understand uh, fully this, uh, this, how was it called, flow and hustle mode. So you've got two modes on the on the rear uh, suspension, will, which will give you more plushness in the travel and not even more efficiency on the other setting. I, I'm not really sure what how how it's how I could take advantage of it. I'm, I'm telling about it uh, in my episode, so the, the link will be in the description. Check it out. Really good descender. If you love descents, if you, if you want to have tough bike but still not into road, this is the bike for you. But on the uh, climbs, I was suffering on the climbs on this bike uh, because that system doesn't help really on the climbs. It's not made for climbing. So fun, tough, descender, rather descender. So if you're maybe a beginner enduro rider, Trigger might be for you. The next bike is the real uh, enduro bike, which is the GQ. And um, yeah, the hustle and flow is called uh, mode. So it's around same same system same, te same technology uh, but this one will be super super tough bike uh, and in this case we really have the full carbon so front and rear swing arm here will be carbon or gq234 will have alloy rear end and uh, the look is pretty awesome you have a bottle cage place here uh, and in this case you've got 170 in the front and 165 in the rear so even more than trigger very capable bike and this is racing bike all right so let's just see what, what we've covered so far we've got the enduro gq we've got scapel and fsi but scapel in the se version not si but se version will be more of a trail bike and then yeah it's here and then habit and bad habit bad habit plus size uh, wheels now sport cujo trail catalyst uh, let's start with the with the cujo so oh catalyst sorry well, let's start with the catalyst this can be um, misunderstood by beginners and I'm I'm really curious how the the bike owners the bike store owners will, will explain that to to the guys trying to figure out which one to buy but I would say Catalyst is the most budget Cannondale mountain bike this is the 27.5 inch wheels 118 really outdated uh, front and very cheap frame maybe it's made uh, in the Cannondale technologies but this is this will be really cheap frame uh, and this is the budget mountain bike of Cannondale on the mid-size uh, wheel the next one uh, this is the also sport Cujo this is more capable uh, bike for fun and what's misleading here is that it's called trail bike well trail bikes are more tough and I would say now trail bikes are full suspension bikes so this one in the highest model it will even get a dropper ball so you can have some fun on this bike uh, but this is still um, like entry level but already has a tapered um, front end tapered means it's not made for lefty it's not 115 1.5 1.5 it's tapered and finally the trail even more even more uh, misleading so trail bikes this is the 29er uh, so uh, let's just I just want to make sure it is 29er I don't remember you, you see this is even yeah no this is yeah 27.5 or 29 so yeah you can have big wheels these are big wheels so once more the catalyst budget mountain bike just to start off and see whether you will be happy with mountain biking the next one is more capable trail bike nice um, 27.5 wheels just for, for fun and then 29er trail 
it will be more expensive than Catalyst, but still not racing bikes, still some kind of have fun on 29er bike. Which one to choose? Ooh, for a beginner, Catalyst. Uh, if you want to really go further into mountain biking, then Cujo, maybe not trail. If, if, if you are shooting for the trail, like you want to be fast and training on the mountain bikes, maybe go for FSI, but then no alloy here. So this is difficult right now, but I would rather choose Catalyst or Cujo because on the lower components, 27.5 wheels uh, are better for beginners, in my opinion. And then the last one, fat bike. So snow, mud, any terrain, they have the Oliver, uh, even lefty for it. Super fun, but not really for everyday ride. That's it guys, some questions, put those in the comments and thanks for watching. Bye.